In this SNP, I'm going to show you how to manage files between local and Azure storage with AZ Copy in PowerShell. First, you will need to download and install the AZ Copy utility from one of the links I have provided here. You can choose from the latest stable release or the latest preview release. I have also provided a link to some documentation on using AZ Copy. I would also like to point out that I am using Visual Studio Code for this demo because there are some cases where AZ Copy will prompt you to overwrite files and the prompting wasn't working in my ISE. The process would just hang and I would have to force stop the script. I'll show you the prompting in just a minute. Once you have the AZ Copy utility installed, the basic syntax is as follows. AZ Copy slash source, then the source of your files, slash DEST for the destination of your files, and then your options. You can also use AZ Copy slash question mark to see more help on these options. To get started, we are going to need two pieces of information a valid access key for the storage account that we will be working with, and the URL for the blob container we will be copying files to and from. To get this information, let's go ahead and switch over to Azure. I have a storage account called TechSnips01 that I would like to use. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now let's click on Access Keys under Settings. This is where you will find the access key for AZ Copy to use. I'm going to go ahead and copy my key 1. Let's go back to VS Code and paste that value into the key variable. Now let's go back to Azure to retrieve the URL. Under the storage account, scroll down to the blob service section and click on containers. Click on the blob container you would like to use, snip container in my case. Then click on properties. Here you will find the URL for this blob container. Let's go ahead and copy that and go back to VS Code. I'm going to paste that value into my blob URL variable. Now I'm going to load those values into those variables. And now we're ready to start working with AZ Copy. I'm going to switch to the AZ Copy folder under Program Files x86. You can also add this location to your path so you can run AZ Copy from anywhere. On my C drive, I have a folder called Files, which contains the files I will be using for this demo. I have two folders and 10 text files. If I switch over to Azure Storage Explorer and hit Refresh, you will notice that my blob container is currently empty. Now let's go ahead and copy a single file to Azure. I'm going to run AZ Copy and use the Source option to specify the folder that contains the file I want to upload. Then the Destination option, where I specify my variable for my blob URL. For the Destination key, I'm going to use the key variable that contains the storage account access key. And finally, I'm going to use the pattern option to specify the name of the file that I want to upload. Let's go ahead and run that command. AZ Copy will output a summary of the transfer. We can see here that one file transferred successfully. If I go over to Storage Explorer and hit Refresh again, we can see that the text file has been uploaded to Azure. If I run that same line again, AZ Copy will prompt if we want to overwrite the file or not. This is where the ISE gets tripped up and hangs. I'm going to type Y and the transfer will run and overwrite the file. Now let's delete the text file from the Azure container. Next, let's copy the entire contents of a folder to Azure. To do this, I'm going to run the same command, except this time I'm going to leave the pattern option off completely. Ten files were transferred successfully. 
You may also have noticed that I got a warning. This warning is telling me that I did not specify the recursive option, so the files within the folder will be transferred in non-recursive mode. This means that if there are any subfolders or files in subfolders, they will not be included in the transfer. Let's go over to Storage Explorer and hit Refresh again. You can see that only the 10 text files were uploaded. Let's go ahead and delete those files. To copy a directory recursively, we need to specify the slash s option. This will include all folders and subfolders in the transfer. You will notice that there were 12 files transferred this time instead of 10. Let's take a look at Storage Explorer again. Here I now have my 10 text files as well as two folders. And under each of those folders I have one text file giving me the 12 files that we saw transferred. Earlier I showed you how to use the pattern option to specify a single file to upload. You can also use a wildcard to upload files with certain patterns. Simply use the asterisk as a wildcard. Here I'm going to upload all files that start with text file 1. There were two files transferred this time. My two text files that begin with text file 1 have both been uploaded, text file 1 and text file 10. You can also specify a virtual directory to upload your files to by adding the directory name to the end of your blob container URL. Here, I want to put my file in a directory called vd in my container. There is now a folder called vd, and inside that folder is the text file I just uploaded. azcopy also has a verbose option you can use to log verbose messages to a text file. Here, I'm going to specify slash v for verbose, then a colon, then the path to the file where the verbose messages will be saved. If this file does not exist, azcopy will create it. Let's go ahead and open that log file. azcopy logs each file that gets transferred as well as a summary at the end. You can also use azcopy to download files from Azure. I have a folder on my C drive called AZ Storage, and if I run get child item, you can see that it is currently empty. To download the files from Azure, we need to change the options around a little bit. For source, we are going to specify the blob URL. For destination, specify the folder where we want the files to be downloaded. And here is one major difference. Earlier, we were using the destination key option. That won't work in this instance since we are copying to the local machine. For this, we need to specify the source key option since our source is now the blob container. Now, if we run that against a single file, the file will be downloaded to the local folder. Let's run get child item again to see our downloaded text file. Now if we want to download all the files from the blob container, we need to leave the pattern option off, but this time we must specify the slash s option, otherwise no files will be downloaded. If we run get child item again, we can see that all files and folders have been downloaded. The last thing I would like to show you is that you can also use azcopy to copy from one blob container to another blob container. In my case, I'm going to use my snip container and snip container 2 blob containers. I'll store those values into the blob URL and blob URL 2 variables. Now when copying from one container to another, we're still going to use the source and destination options. This time, the source is going to be the originating blob URL. The destination will be the blob URL 2 that we want to copy the files to. And since we are copying between two blob containers, we are going to need to specify the source key and the destination key. In my case, both of those keys are the same. If you are copying to a container on a different storage account, you would need to provide the key for that storage account. Before I run this, let me show you that the snip container 2 is currently empty.
Now I'll run AZ copy. We'll see that one file transferred successfully. And we'll hit refresh. Text file one has been copied between the two containers. And that is how to manage files between local and Azure storage with AZ copy and PowerShell.